Hello and welcome to CERN. We've prepared some virtual visits for you because if you can't be here in person, this is the next best thing. Enjoy. We are now at the antimatter factory and today here with us is Michael Dozer, Senior Research Scientist at CERN. Um, so Michael, could you please tell us first what is antimatter uh, and what happens here at the antimatter factory? Uh, first of all, antimatter is something very common. It's the mirror image of normal matter. Matter is made up of protons, neutrons on one hand, electrons on the other. Each proton, neutron, has an antimatter partner, an antiproton, antineutron, and the antielectron has an antimatter partner, the positron. So every time you transform energy into stuff, E is equal to mc squared, you actually end up producing pairs, a particle and its antiparticle partner. And this is what happens here in the lab. It's also what should have happened at the moment of the Big Bang, when all the energy of the universe transformed into the stuff that we see right now. Except that if you look at the universe now, all the stuff that you see is matter and not antimatter, although we expect half of it to be made of antimatter. And this huge mystery is something that is a little bit of an embarrassment. And so we tried to study antimatter in order to find out how this could happen, how this could have happened at that time. And the best way to study something is to make it and look at it very, very carefully. So in this place here at CERN, in the antimatter decelerator, we make antimatter, we make antiprotons. This is the only place on Earth where this happens. By shooting protons into matter and transforming their energy into pairs of particles and antiparticles. But the antiparticles that come out are then moving so fast that we have to slow them down before we can catch them and study them. And so this structure here consists of two decelerators. They're just accelerators switched backwards, which slow down things. The first one is the antiproton decelerator, which is surrounding this whole hall, which takes the antiprotons from the speed of light down to one tenth the speed of light. And then the second one, which is down here, which takes the slowed down antiprotons further down in energy until we can actually hope to catch them, down to about one hundredth the speed of light. At that point, they're distributed to the different experiments that are sited inside the hall and which will then catch them and study their properties very, very carefully. We are now below the platform where we just uh, were before, uh, in this mad scientist looking place. Um, what's going on here, Michael? Well, uh, this is the place where half of the magic happens. Uh, the half of the magic that takes the antiprotons and slows them down, but also cools them to avoid that they scatter all over the place. Technology that was invented 40 years ago that is the second iteration of a technology that the first iteration of earned a Nobel Prize for, and that is still being used these days. Although there are new technologies coming in, some of which have to do with the fact that we are facing a huge challenge when we work with antimatter, namely that it annihilates upon contact with matter. So if you want to work with antimatter, you have to have an extraordinarily good vacuum. A vacuum that is so good that we don't have a technology yet to measure it. You told me down there that um, you're working on technologies that don't exist yet basically continuously prototyping. Is that what these experiments up here are doing? To some extent. Uh, these experiments are trying to do stuff that's never been done before, like measure how antimatter falls, for which it has to be extremely cold, like a millionth of a degree above absolute zero, or measure extremely precisely the color of antihydrogen atoms or of other antimatter atoms. And some of the technologies are continuously being developed and improved, other technologies are being invented, and other technologies, we don't even know how to make them yet in order to achieve the measurements that we want to do. Uh, for example, uh, we're working on technologies that will hopefully cool 
antimatter at matter atoms, which may result in microscopes with antimatter. Or, for example, technologies that will allow us to transport antimatter, where you can basically have a mail order service for antimatter that will then ship it around the world. These technologies don't exist yet. They will probably exist in 10 years' time. And then, in addition to all the other technologies that we're working on, we'll have to figure out what to do with them, which is something that we probably won't be doing, but rather you will. Thank you, Michael, for this visit.